At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. Hey, what's up, Rattler? So I'm on the Atlantic side of Florida right now, and Florida and the entire southeast part of the United States is home to the world's largest rattlesnake, the Eastern Diamondback, Crotalus adamantius. So come with me, and let's go see if we can find the world's largest rattlesnake. This is gonna be an awesome adventure. I'm Dave Kaufman, and I am obsessed with reptiles, and I have been since I was nine years old. 25 years later, I made a trilogy of award-winning movies about them. Now my life is all about touring the world in search of them in wild places and checking out some of the most awesome breeding facilities and reptile expos while I'm at it. So come with me and join my reptile adventures. Look at this, guys. This little corn snake is just sitting here, sunning himself. Wow, the things you find in Florida, this is awesome. Look at this guy. All right, Rattlers, so this is a wild Florida corn snake. And they get their name from the checkerboard pattern on their belly. Whoever named this guy thought that that looked like Indian corn and therefore named this the corn snake. A lot of people think that it is named corn snake because it eats corn. There is no vegetarian snakes anywhere on earth. This is a rat and mice eater, but such a cool bonus to find while we're looking for that diamond back. Well, Rattlers, when you've been hiking around since 6 a.m., going miles and miles through this thick, dense jungle, you get a little tired and you have to improvise. Check this out. How we doing, you Frank? Hey, Dave Kaufman, how are you? Good to see you. All right. I get shotgun, huh? Yes, sir. I'll wow. take you to a spot and we'll just have to see if uh, it might already be too hot in the day, but we'll see what happens. Yeah, let's go out there and check it out. So we walk from here. Look at this, guys. Big old gopher. Hi, buddy. So Frank, what is the status of the gopher tortoises in Florida? Are they endangered? Are they protected? They're a listed species of concern. Uh, that's mostly due to the fact that the places you find them, like out here, are high ground. It makes the best building opportunities, so that's where everybody wants to build, and they pull permits, and uh, that's where they end up building that. So they'll never be endangered so that people can get those permits and destroy the habitat, basically? Uh, I can't say if that's true or not, but they, uh, the places where they are, the places that people want to build, it's non-swamp, it's high ground. That's how it works. Gotcha. They've got a lot of stuff affecting them right now as far as uh, respiratory illnesses and everything else that are going around, so. Where are uh, they getting the respiratory illnesses from? Each other. Okay. Yep. Who knows where it all started, but uh, that's one of the things they're battling. 
And when you start losing gopher tortoises, you're losing everything else too, because it's home to, what, 170 different commensal species that live in the same hole. So whenever they start going away, you start losing everything else that goes along with it. The pine snake, the indigo, uh, diamondbacks, every other little bug and uh, gopher mice, everything that lives in there with them is taking a hit when they're taking a hit. So 170 species live in these gopher tortoise burrows. They have 170 different commensals that live there with them, yep. Wow. Wow. It's well, a little bit overwhelming when you start thinking about it. It really is, and hopefully they'll get the protection they need. All right, Rattler, so when you're looking for eastern diamondbacks in midday here in uh, tropical Florida, it is really, really warm right now. But what you look for in these kinds of situations when you're out here in the middle of the afternoon. This morning at the other location, I think that was our best bet. It was great to see that corn snake, but obviously we didn't see the Eastern Diamond back there, but this is what you look for. These are tortoise mounds. These are gopher tortoise mounds, and gopher tortoises will walk around in this heat. We've already seen a couple of them, but the Eastern Diamondbacks will utilize these gopher tortoise burrows as their shelter. They're in there with the tortoises. They don't bother each other, but the tortoise does all the work of digging out this burrow, and then these snakes come and say, hey, look at that, and they start using that as their primary shelter. So what'll happen is, during the heat of the day, these snakes are in these gopher tortoise mounds, but they'll come out and they'll bask just on the edge of the mounds. So what you do is you walk around and you look for these tortoise burrows, and that's where you have a better chance of finding the eastern diamondbacks. <laughs> All right, Rattlers, so we have been out here for hours and hours. We have walked for countless miles through this really awesome habitat. We've, <coughs> we've seen some really cool reptiles here, but we still haven't seen the Eastern Diamondback, and that's what I'm out here for. It's common in this area, but hey, listen, sometimes you just don't find what you're looking for. So I'm gonna change my strategy a little bit, and I'm gonna get in the car, I'm gonna drive two hours to the Gulf side of the state, and I'm gonna meet up with my friends Chris and Abby, and we're gonna check over on that side of the state. Hopefully we'll have more luck over there. <laughs> So right here is a gopher tortoise mound, and then look at this right here, guys. Right in the sawgrass is the perfect indentation of a snake that was sunning himself here. We are getting close. All right, we're getting closer. This is the shed of the Diamondback. This is really dry and brittle, so this isn't new at all, but Diamondback shed, that's a good sign. Look at the size of those ventral scales on this guy. This was a big, big snake. This is a decent sized snake though. That is a big snake. Look and then there's another piece of it just over here. Yeah, that is a- size comparison. That is a really decent sized snake. Let's find it. All right guys, so that little guy right there is a Southern Black Racer. They are one of the most successful snakes down here. And the reason why they're so successful is because they can live really anywhere. They can live in these thick forests, they can live in suburban backyards, and they often do. And they've also learned to adapt to how humans are altering these environments down here. When they bulldoze a forest to build another housing development, sure the snakes leave, but when the housing development is built, these snakes move right in and can live happily right in suburban backyards. What really makes them successful is their diet. When they're babies, the babies will eat earthworms and they will eat insects and arthropods and smaller frogs and things like that. But as they get to be adults, they move up to fish and frogs, and like other reptiles, they will eat rodents, but these guys will also take down a lizard and they'll even eat other snakes. That is the most successful snake down here, and as the invasives start really encroaching on this area and native reptiles are kind of being pushed out, this is gonna be one of the snakes that is going to remain and their populations are going to be very stable.
Well, Rattlers, that's it. We are out of time. Abby needs to get back and go to work. I need to drive down to the Naples area and film a BOA episode, and then back to Miami, and I fly out in the morning. So, you know, it really kind of sucks when you don't find what you're looking for. And, you know, we're looking for a snake that isn't doing as well as it used to do out here even 10 years ago its numbers are dropping so it's just getting harder and harder to find these snakes in the wild more so again than it did even a decade ago but i have literally traveled from one end of the state to the other trying to find this snake and again it's not as easy to find here as it was just 10 years ago its numbers are declining so it really sucks when you don't find what you're looking for but when this happens it just boosts my excitement level for the next adventure down here but anyway we've got a long walk through this forest to get back to the car and it really sucks that we didn't find this guy but it certainly wasn't from a lack of trying Abby. Abby. So Chris and I walk right past this guy and Abby screams I found one. I almost walked right into him and I was just like, wait a minute, there's a face staring at me. Yeah, no, please take that. That was definitely a shock. I was not expecting That is fantastic, Abby. I was like, oh, there's stab on my hand. I look up and I was like, oh, there's a snake staring at me. And how many times do you think we might have actually just done that yesterday? So Abby's live on Facebook right now. So you just kind of walked up here. Yeah, no. I looked down for one second because I was, this was going to be my only souvenir of the day. I thought for sure this was going to be it, and I had sap on my hand, so I looked down and I was like, well, that's unfortunate, and I looked up for one second, and he was staring me clean in the face. If I didn't actually look up, I was going to walk right over him. Well, Chris and I walked right past him. So there's Chris. Chris and I are talking about coming back down to film these guys another day. And Chris and I walk right past him, and Abby stops and says, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I wasn't expecting all that yellow. Yeah, that's no, really that's what it was. That's fantastic. It blends right in with the leaves. Absolutely perfect. Fantastic. <laughs> in the world. Of the 30 some odd rattlesnakes in the world and the 80 some odd subspecies, this one is the biggest in the world. And right now I'm a little too close to him, so I'm gonna back off, but this is my lifer, and this is one of the most beautiful rattlesnakes I've ever seen in the world. Oh man, this is absolutely amazing. That in the last 50 seconds, you know, a lot of shows set up to be that you find the animal you're looking for in the last two seconds of your trip. This is actually real life. This is, we are on our way out and we're so late and Abby comes across and sees this. Chris and I, we walk right past this guy. In the last two minutes of our trip, Abby spots this guy as we walk by. So again, of the 30 odd species of rattlesnakes in the world and of the 80 some odd subspecies, this is the biggest rattlesnake in the world. And it's my lifer. That is fantastic. Woo! Oh, Abby. <laughs> I can't believe that the two, like, master herpers walk right past the thing. Abby, that is fantastic. Are you applying about a master herper card? You are a master herper now. <laughs> oh, that is fantastic. Lifers! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> All right, we gotta go.
So Rattlers, that was an absolutely epic adventure here in Florida. Literally going from one end of the state to the other, hiking and driving over countless miles and searching through every kind of habitat that Florida has to offer in our search for this incredibly awesome snake. So, you know, success in the field comes from research, tenacity, and luck or in this case, just bringing Abby with you when you're herping. I swear, it is exactly the way that it happened. Chris and I walked right past that snake and Abby was the one who found it, literally in the last five minutes of our search. Over the past couple of days we've been out here and that's exactly how it happened. And sometimes it literally just happens that way. And when it does, it just makes the find even more awesome. So anyway, guys, right now I am on my way to another shoot. I've got about a two hour drive ahead of me and I'm supposed to be there in an hour and a half and I am in badly need of a shower. So I've got to really rush and get through all of that. But until the next adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession and rattle on.